Three, two, one, and we are live. And welcome back to day two of this masterclass, this trilogy of three around different ways to be iconic, whether it's iconic visibility, whether it's iconic branding, whether it's making an iconic impact. Maybe you would like your offers or what you are inviting people into to be a little bit more iconic. So today is day two. I have my timer here, other words known as my phone. I have my notes here. There you go. Um, I literally do these unscripted, but I prepare and I, I also have some notes today to share because I want to share some kind of like stats and figures with you. But today, we are going to be talking about what they don't know that you do. No, this is not conspiracy theory. This is the secret source of the underpinning of sales and marketing. And this is especially for you. If you run a business, you founded a business, you co-own a business, maybe you're the only person in your business. Maybe you consider yourself a small business. Either way, your mission is big. And your plan is to be huge. Now, I'm not talking about being famous and having long lenses pointed through your window. It's the reason why I don't teach that kind of fame visibility stuff. I have um, experience of people who are well known, companies and brands that are well known, and specifically individuals who have become famous in the spotlight. And a lot of the things that they go through on a day to day basis, while their skills have got them there, are not what you want to emulate. So I don't teach that. Why would you? Why would you, when you're going through the most difficult time of your life, um, be long lensed through your front window? Yes, this happened. Why would you be a person in an office who decides that actually the press are asking if they can come and camp out? In here so they can get a better view into somebody's garden. Why would you do that? So I don't teach that kind of fame, but I teach you and your work to be out there so that your big mission can be realised and the huge plans and desires and dreams that you have in your head can get out there in the world. So if you are watching this for the first time, and I am constantly connecting with people, um, online and offline. Um, so if you have just happened to come across this, maybe one of your friends, colleagues, peers have shared this video. My name, as you can see there, is Jenny Kovacs. I'm a quiz quizability veen. <laughs> I'm a visibility queen who can sometimes speak properly, known as the queen of being seen. And why am I known as the queen of being seen? Well, I'm passionate about your visibility. I'm passionate about you being visible, you being heard and being taken seriously. And I'm in my 15th year of business, which means I've seen a lot. And on today's topic, it will particularly be very, very relevant to that. But your voice matters. You having your work seen, your voice being heard, whether you do it from a page, a stage or a screen, and you getting the recognition and this, again, means that, yes, you get recognised as a person for your work. And people that I've worked with have had MBEs um, or have gone on to have MBEs. And by the way, I don't get you an MBE. They do it through their work, through putting themselves out there, through being visible. And some of them already had them before they, long before they met me. Um, getting the recognition is as simple as this, I, I would say. Um, for the people that I've coached, the companies and the brands that I've worked with over the last 15 years, here's the bit that's most important. You share the stuff that you love, the transformations that you provide people, the things that you want to see differently in the world, and they, like, they, they drink it up. They absorb it almost by osmosis. They inhale what you're sharing. It's that that has you feel recognised. And it's that kind of iconic visibility that I talk about in here. And of course, it helps you to be able to sell your services, to um, for people to purchase your products. 
and for you to have your mission out there in the world in a way that sells, not just, oh, I've done a thousand videos now, how great am I, look at me. So with that to say, um, what we're going to talk about today, what we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk about in this masterclass, iconic brands and what they actually look like in 2024 and beyond into 2025. I could have done this on my predictions, but I'll save that for another video that I'll probably put out online on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, we, we, our aim today is to talk about or have your brand talked about. Now it's all well and good looking at the Googles of the world looking at the you know facebook meta the the well-known people out there in the world but actually there are a lot of brands out there doing a lot of incredible things that aren't necessarily known and this will help you kind of see the balance of the fame side of it um versus the getting your work out there and getting your work known so let me just make sure um yeah let me start with this i have been heard to say often that visibility is the glue that brings together your sales and your marketing um it's the glue between your sales and your marketing but there's a slight problem with me saying that and the problem is that according to research, small businesses are often struggling to effectively market their goods, their products, their services. Um, and that was in a, a report from Constant Contact. And if you're thinking, who on earth are Constant Contact? They get a lot of information behind the scenes because they are um, one of the world's most known email providers for entrepreneurial type businesses, freelancers. So if you've got an email list, yes, you might use MailChimp or um, Infusionsoft or Keep as it now is, um, but you might also use Constant Contact. And by the way, there's lots, lots and lots of different um, people that you can use. And what they realized was that a lot of small businesses have a problem with how they market. So let's start from there. If visibility, especially iconic visibility, is the glue between your sales and marketing um, and you haven't quite sussed out your sales and marketing, um, which is quite common for people that have, even when they've been in business for years, especially when they've been making money. I've been going for 15 years and I'm still here. I always think there's a lot that I can do with my sales and my marketing. Um, but as always, I will, I can see it in other people. And for me, that's where I reach out to programs, to coaches, to mentors, to work with them. Because it's like trying to cut your own hair. You always get that bit at the back. You can't quite see it. So in this report, they revealed um, what Constant Contact called a concerning trend. Listen to this. Many business owners are overwhelmed by marketing. Now, guess what percentage of them aren't confident in their current strategy or that it's contributing to their business goals? Have a guess. And if you're watching this on the replay, do play along too. Type it in the in the chat box below. So the number of small business owners who are overwhelmed by marketing and aren't confident that their current strategy is contributing to their business goals is 73%. That's nearly three quarters. The uncertainty is sometimes like fueled by not knowing the best methods for communicating with customers or lacking the time to actually put the plans in place and execute them or implement them. Um, and what I've seen over the years in people that I've worked with is it means that they worry, they press pause, they procrastinate, they don't do anything. And the sad thing about that is many business owners don't go on to reach their full potential. They'll tap into elements of it and then they'll kind of 
um, scale back. Now, let's quickly talk about the elephant in the room. A lot of people are currently worried about the economy. 81% of people surveyed by Constant Contact, they said they were concerned that the current economy could negatively impact their business. And all it takes is to speak to any small business owner, think about this, whether you class yourself a small um, SME, large corporation, when we own our own business, we don't have the luxury of sitting back and having people do stuff for us. And it was interesting because I recently asked somebody a question about um, the feast famine cycle. And whilst many business coaches will tell you that it's, and a lot of the time this is also true, because we market ourselves in a feast and famine way, therefore get feast and famine results. Actually, what I identified when I was reflecting on this was, for me, it's definitely the operational side of stuff. You know, if you work for a company and you're not working it within your own business and you need some marketing done, and I remember this well from my days um, as a senior manager within financial services, if there was a new campaign, the marketing team would construct the campaign, they would um, deliver the proposal to the board um, and we would all sit there and finesse it or say, yep, this is great. But we trusted the marketing department. They were amazing. They were savvy. They were smart. They advised the board. They advised us as senior leaders and we took their steer. And then if there were any ideas or anything to implement. So I did a lot around um, training not only the, the client's um, customers and clients but also in-house as well so kind of overall training if there are any useful additions I would normally kind of pitch them to the room um, thankfully the board who were amazing um, were always very I don't even want to say supportive because that feels patronizing but um, we're really kind of cutting edge in taking knowledge from where it came from but all I would have to do is speak out what it was I was looking for and they would go off and do it I didn't have to do my own accounts I didn't have to manage anything operationally I didn't even have to go above and beyond on my business development stuff you know we had a sales team we had a, a team that would make the phone calls for us send the emails for us we had people that would chase up information that we needed we had people that would go out and encourage our clients to attend our events so there were always somebody else doing that and for many small business owners as well as potentially the worry of the uncertainty in the marketplace um their ability or sometimes concerns around their own sales processes, their own marketing processes, then this is where we can fall in sort of like between the gaps. So the thing I would say to you, and this isn't part of the masterclass, is um, whether you're the business owner um, or whether you see someone else who's a business owner sharing their stuff, a lot of people do stuff offline, a lot of people do stuff online. But don't poo-poo or poo-poo, poo-poo, don't poo-poo what they're doing and really encourage them, really like share their stuff. Because sometimes, and I know this not just from myself, but from people that I've worked with, it's like you're literally throwing them a lifeline. You, by sharing their work, are doing something or putting in place something that they don't already have on board. They don't have a sales team on board. You, by sharing the work... Um, or sharing the thing that they've shared means that somebody else gets to see what they've done. And I think in a world online where people talk about being kind and be kind, I think that um, sharing, caring and sharing is really the way forward. Um, but I know that a lot of people that don't run their own business or maybe don't know somebody that runs their own business, they don't know that, they don't understand that. <coughs> Excuse me. So. If you are a business owner who thinks there's not enough hours in the day, I just don't have enough time to plan out my sales, my marketing or my visibility because I've got so many other things to do, then um, here's some stuff that I think will be really beneficial and really helpful. OK, so um, I've got notes written down here, literally in my little book. 
<laughs> as well that I want to. And it's like, where do I start? So what some of those bigger brands, well-known brands, successful brands, even if they're not brands that you've necessarily heard of, here are some things that they they don't do, I guess, um, is the best way to put it. So thing number one is um, one of the problems when you consider all of these spinning plates that a lot of people are doing in their day to day, whether they are employed in a business or got their own business, is that sometimes they can get emotionally attached. So the biggest problem is that people get emotionally attached to the selling element. And there's a reason for that. They may be targeted. Their livelihood depends on it. They need to pay their mortgage. And it means that when they show up, they don't show up as iconic. Gulp of water, sorry. So here's something that when I was putting together this masterclass, this trilogy, um, I remembered. I remembered, now I am an iPhone person through and through. You know, I work for, for Mac. I have <laughs> numerous phones. Um, and I, I love the Apple brand. But I remembered the first time that I bought an iPhone. So let me take you back to the emotional attachment or, you know, attachment from or detachment um, from when we are being iconically visible. I remember, and you've got to think back, this was in the days where Nokia ruled the day. Um, you could play snake on your phone. You couldn't make videos very well. And then after a while, you could make very short kind of a few second videos, but they were very basic. And people started talking about their iPhones and how brilliant they were. And I remember seeing the iPod and thinking, well, that looks cool. I get that. You know, all that music I can carry around, it'd be great to listen to. But I really don't get why anyone needs a phone that's like an iPod that's a bit bigger and does everything on it. I get that it's handy and, and everything else, but I just don't get it. I wasn't an early adopter. And... I remember somebody showing me their phone and doing all of this to it. And I'm thinking, well, that, that blows my mind. I'm, I'm still curious, but like, I, I don't get it. And at the time, I lived quite close to Brighton. So um, we went into Brighton. I found the Apple store. And the first thing that hit me was like, it looks different to any other shops that I've been into. It wasn't just how it looked but it was how it felt to be in there and then I remember seeing these phones with a bit of string attached to them so obviously they weren't stolen and I remember thinking well it's it's really the iPod I want so let me hit music so I hit the music thing and found some music and I'd heard something on the radio in the car just as I was kind of driving in so I thought I'm going to find this I really liked it and I listened to it the phone felt great. So why am I telling you this story? Because in that moment, that's the moment that my emotions were triggered. So here's the first thing that I want to say. This is obvious. We talk about people buying from people with no like trust factor. But when you talk about brands, brands, people buy brands through emotion. And when we are spinning plates and sometimes as owners, the way that we can go out there with our brand and not be iconic is by having the emotion be about us and not be about them. Because the minute I picked that phone up and started sliding, I knew that I was going to buy an iPhone. That was the moment. And it wasn't too long after that moment that I bought my first phone. But it didn't stop there. I bought the phone and I remember thinking, but this box is like, what do you expect an exquisite box of chocolates to be in? Everything was flush. I remember the, the vision of not how it looked, but how it felt, or not only how it looked, but how it felt. The fact that the box was curved on the side, the fact that at the time, if I remember rightly, the top of it was like, um, transparency, you could see the product inside. The fact that it was elevated and they'd even gone to the trouble of making, um, you know, a little standout of paper out of cardboard that would hold it up, that was branded and felt 
Now, anyone who has bought, and I'm sure it's now not just the iPhone um, or Apple products, but anyone who's bought an Apple product, how tactile the packaging is, how you do want to um, touch it. So people buy brands through emotion, but not necessarily your emotion. So one of the things that you're going to see a lot more in 2025 and that has been even more effective this year and especially post pandemic is evoking emotions in your clients in an iconic way. It's no longer about you. It's no longer about your emotion. It's no longer about your pity story. It's about being able to metaphorically um, transmit and show emotion through what you sell. Now, I've probably made that sound like, a, oh, my gosh, how do I do that? And that's why um, I'm going to be speaking to you in a little bit about Iconic, um, the program, for want of a better um, expression, and how we'll do that through there. The other problem that people have is that a lot of people desire to have these massive online businesses. I mean, who wouldn't want to? You get the chance to work from home or work from anywhere. You get the opportunity to look after, it could be caring responsibilities, children, could be your own health, it could be your own mental health, um, and you get to set the parameters and boundaries there. But one of the things that you will see even more of, and it's not just because we are now out of lockdown a couple of years or anything else like that, or even the threat of COVID has passed, but it's about utilising our online experiences and our offline experiences. And a lot of people believe that to be successful, maybe because they look through the lens of social media, that they have to be just online. They have to post a lot of times a day. They have to have really well-written content. In order to speak, they have to have a speaker reel. I was just literally before this answering a question of somebody who has spoken a fair bit, wants to get into more speaking, and they think the best way to do it is, boom, straight on the speaker reel. That is a good way but that's not the only way. So utilise being offline. Um, and this was best demonstrated by one of my former clients who um, has a bricks and brick and mortar business, but also um, has three different countries that they're based from. So they do offline marketing and they do online too. They have got the relevant social media channels. They have got the relevant reach and they have worked really hard to build that. And they also um, give people an experience when they um, are in contact with them offline. Now, you might think, well, why is this important? It's interesting that when I first started working with them in about 2015, I actually rolled my sleeves up and for a period of a few months actually delved into their business. I was like their salesperson. I answered customer inquiries. I looked at what was selling. I looked at how they could improve their systems and automations. And although that's not my zone of genius, that's all a big part of it. So I'm going to cough again. So I looked at all of those things. And we put on a, a little event. And at that event, in the space of three days, I made the most amount of sales for them, because I do love sales, good sales. I made the most amount of um, revenue for them in those three days. And in that quarter, it was their highest um, revenue quarter. Now, I didn't think anything of it. So I was quite surprised that when less than a year ago, um, the founder contacted me, we were kind of chatting because after that time, we became very friendly as well. And when they contacted me and told me that they had only just all these years later, nine years later, beaten that record. Now, I'm convinced I love sales. I enjoy sales. I don't do hard sales tactics or hard pitching. Um, I like collaborative sales. And that's what we embedded in that culture um, for that client. And although they've been doing so well over the years, more exposure, more credibility, more business, bigger audiences, it blew my mind to think that 
for a lot of businesses, it can take them so long to then um, like overcome that plateau. Remember that it's not just about being online. In fact, if you look up a company called Lush, yes, on the high street, you smell them before you see them. Um, look up George Clooney. I'm sure you know who um, who he is. Um, and also, if you are on X or Twitter, have a look at how many posts Apple actually posts on there. I, I'm no longer on Twitter. So up until probably about six months ago when I was, you'll notice I don't hardly post anything. Online is a great tool to reach more people, but it depends on what you do. And if you want to share your stuff and be iconic, it's really, really important to know um, the parameters of what to do and how to do it. I want to share, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine things all together. I want to share them. But before I go on and just share those insights with you, I want to talk about Iconic, the program. So Iconic officially starts next Monday, so not long away now. Um, an Iconic is a way for your brand to become iconic. We'll talk about the myths around personal branding and the things that will move you forward. We'll talk about how to create clear, iconic offers, the sorts of offers that you can get behind, that your energy and your whole psyche is wanting to put out there in the world, whether it's online or offline. I've worked with the most unusual businesses too. So coaches, consultants, you're welcome. Bricks and mortar businesses, you're welcome too. I've worked with people who've worked with animals. I've worked with spiritual businesses. I've worked with people who retail one-off um, items. I've worked with people at director level who have founded companies, sold on companies. I've even worked with professional associations so that their members can go out there. Everything from financial services to travel, um, to marketing, to um, marine engineering to compliance. So I have yet to find something that this can't be molded to. I want you to be able to make an iconic impact, iconic visibility, and to be able to know the frameworks that suit your business and you. There's no point me giving you a cookie cutter approach that you have to do A, B and C, and then it'll be done. I want you to be able to put your work out there even if you're a brand that's well known in your industry or in your area, um, but not necessarily known internationally, you can absolutely um, do that. So we will be going through 10 um, modules, which I train out live. And in those um, modules, we will be covering branding, offers, content, sharing, impact, visibility and the frameworks and also um, how to be iconically accountable as well, which is an important thing. Otherwise, nothing gets implemented. We'll be doing those in live group calls. This will be a small group. I only want to work with five people. And here's why. Over those 10 modules, which you'll get around two a week. Um, so this program is kind of like a five week program. In the whole time that you are that you're working with me and we're working together, this will be a hybrid of a group program where we teach these modules. And if you can't make the modules, you'll get the recordings of those that you can listen to again and again and again. And in between that, you can book a private call with me. So apart from the first call, a 30 minute call with me. So if you wanted to, after each module, you could book a private call so that we can embed and make sure that it's suitable for you, your audience, your business type, your credibility and what you do in a way that feels iconic and good to you and good to the people you're serving. This is not a program to pretend you're something you're not. This is not a program of boast post. This is not a program for you to do as I say and not as I do. This is something that will have you stand out in the way that you want to stand out to the people that you want to stand out to in a way that feels aligned and in integrity to you. This program, um, once it starts, is £995. However, 
if you decide that you would like to um, sign up and register before this, um, there's 50% off it. So it works out, I've worked it out to be roughly £495. Okay, so if that's um, something that you know that you would like to jump into, send me a message with the word iconic um, and I can send you the link to get you booked on, send you the schedule, send you the group where um, all the, the stuff happens. I'm keeping this to a small group because to work with this deeply with five businesses in this way um, takes a lot. It takes a lot. And as we work together, I will be working alongside you. This is why it's a hybrid program. It's a hybrid of group and um, personal program too, private program. If you're looking at this and thinking, I don't really know whether this is for me or not, can I have a quick word with you? Then send me um, a message and, and literally say, Iconic, can, can I speak to you? Um, let me know what about what you do is Iconic or what you think about what you do is iconic, and what might stop you. Now, if you are part of the High Impact Visibility um, Club, then I have been running some of the old um, masterclasses from the iconic that I did in March this year, and that pricing applies to you. The only thing to to know is that I won't take more than the allocated people the allotted people because it I, I want to be able to serve you well that's part of my iconic brand I like to look after the people that I've got in in my sphere so very quickly before I go back and just share the final bits of that what will we be doing? We'll be talking about iconic branding, the sort of branding that you can do from where you are in a way that has people find you, seek you out, um, and has you really portray what you do. Um, and on this, we talk a little bit about nonverbal stuff as well. Iconic offers so that you can make invitations and offers to people. And I'm not just talking about coaching, um, but you can make the kind of offers that if it's right for somebody that they will lean into, they'll be intrigued by, they'll want to know more about. Um, and if it's not right, you'll have the confidence and credibility to say this is not right for you because without shaming them, without judging them. And quite often my clients tell me that they're able to offer something more suitable instead. And in my experience, if I'm not able to help you with something that you come to me for, I will point you in the direction of peers, of other people's work, of books, of other things too. So being able to iconically offer your services has people remember you. And I get so many people refer to me through that alone. Iconic content. A lot of the time we hear lots of different things about sharing our content and putting it out there. And people put a lot of pressure to type their, their post without any typos. That's not actually what makes you iconic or not people then feel pressured to get it right on video they don't know what to say they don't know how to sell or share their services on there that's not what makes you iconic what makes you iconic is your ability to share the sort of relevant content that is tied to the things that you do the message that you share the services that you provide the products that you sell and not many people know how to do this succinctly they think of it as a big, long program. Remember that statistic, the 73% of people, basically they procrastinate on it. They don't have time. They stop themselves. And they do that because they literally don't know what to do next. And I've seen this happen in bigger companies where marketing have got one strategy, the board have got another strategy, and everyone's kind of bumping up against each other and going in different directions. So let's make the content you share easy. Let's make it relevant to your brand, relevant to your offers, and iconic in a way that people really see, hear, and feel. How to share stuff iconically, we'll go a bit deeper into that, and how to do it as you, which is why I've incorporated those private calls. Now, iconic impact. Sometimes we want to make an impact. Sometimes it's the impression we want to leave. And this is not people pleasing. This is um, a way to really make a lasting impact on the people that you've always desired to do, whether they 
work with you initially, whether they're looking at what you're sharing, whether they have got you on their vision board, whether they're looking to, to work with you. Iconic visibility. Iconic visibility um, isn't about being famous, as I said at the start of, of this um, masterclass. It's about people gravitating towards you. But in order to be iconically visible, and I've always said this, visibility is an inside job. So I set you up with some really great tools and things to use. When the going gets tough, you can use them. When something that's really important to you that you want to put out in the, in the world matters, you can use those tools. And iconic visibility will really be defined by you and where you're looking to go to. Again, another reason why I wanted to include um, private calls without this. Um, the accountability part of it, I share a little bit about um, the fact that we don't or shouldn't be going into programs hoping that someone's going to hold our feet to the fire. In order to be iconic in your accountability, it's knowing how to be iconically accountable to you first. And that's where you see people thrive and grow in these spaces. And we will also touch on frameworks, although that's another bigger piece of work. But in the book, Three, um, Think and Go um, Grow Rich, I can't speak today, <laughs> Think and Grow Rich, they talk about organised knowledge. There's a power of organised knowledge. If we don't know how to organise our knowledge, we don't know what content to share. We don't know what offers to share. We don't know how to speak about what we do. We don't know how to have the right people, know if the people are right for us or not. You know, I was speaking to a client recently who um, sold a really great package. They'd been excited about it. It was a price point that was a lot higher than before. And they sold the package. They were very excited to get started, did all the things that they would normally do, um, and then started to encounter problems in the communication between them and the clients. Um, and although people don't teach it this way, that can lead back to the frameworks you've got. It's the reason why when I'm interviewed, whether it's on the BBC, whether it's on someone's podcast, whether it's a TV thing, I know from my own framework which bits and pieces to pick out and which pieces will not serve anybody if I kind of spew it at them. There is such a thing as giving people too much, so much that they don't know what to do with it. So this will be the iconic way to become even more visible for your brand, for your business, for your offers, for your content, for your impact, for your visibility, for your accountability um, and being able to show the world who you are. Like, who are you really? So I'm going to share um, some other things, but I want to before I share those and then wrap this up, I want to ask you a question. If you were approached by the press or Oprah or someone really high profile who said, I'd love you to come and share what you do on my program, in my newspaper, on our channel, would you be ready? Imagine then that that was going to happen 20 minutes from the time they asked and you've literally had no time to prepare would you be able, confident, credible to speak about it with no time to prepare? Now, that's not something that I need you to type in the box below. If you want to, you can do. But it's a, a question that I would love you to reflect on. Some of you instantly would know the answer. Definitely yes, definitely no. Um, it's that kind of readiness. You know, over the years, I have had phone calls that I actually was expecting. Her. Have you been hurt in an accident and it's been hi this is a producer from bbc5 live we have just run a segment on such and such and such and such and we would love somebody to come on and talk about xyz um are you able to do this and it'll, the segment will be in about 20 minutes half an hour i think sometimes i've had 24 hours 48 hours and one time where i actually appeared on the segment i was um, speaking at a retreat and the connection went um so all I could hear was, I'm, I'm so sorry, Jenny, we can't hear you. We're going to have to see if we can get you back on the line. <gasps> I thought it was a Friday morning, primetime breakfast. I was speaking about visibility on video um, and how it could serve people in their careers. And we lost connection. I was so relieved that within an hour, the producer had 
called, left me a message and said, we're so sorry about that. Is there any way you'd be able to come back on Monday and speak about it? These are short um, amounts of time. These are times where we have to show up under pressure. And I'd love to say that it's all, you know, green rooms and flowers and white M&Ms and all of that kind of stuff. But it isn't always that way. If Oprah called you today, would you be able to show up in an iconic way? So some of the stuff that we cover in um, Iconic Impact will talk about what you do. What did I do when I had half an hour to get ready for a TV interview on the BBC? Talking about a topic, actually, that wasn't my area of expertise. I knew that I could lean into the non-verbals um, as well as what I spoke about and what I shared to give myself that credibility. And we'll talk all about that in um, one of the iconic modules too. So I've already told you about iconic. So let me cover some more of these things to think about um, when you are looking um, to be more iconic. Think of them as uncovering any problems, concerns, worries or struggles and then look at, well, what would need to happen for me to feel great with that? So I'm better off probably reading my typing because reading my writing, I can't stretch it out. <laughs> so do you know how to position yourself in terms of colour psychology. I feel like I want to leave that there. There are certain colours that pop and the clues, of course, have been in the graphics for, for um, these masterclasses, which have looked nothing like the iconic graphics, but use the same sort of concepts. And the reason that I share that kind of dichotomy is because I want to show that there is a range. It's not just one thing that you do, one type of colour that you share, and then that's it. Um, people often look at their branding or their brand colours, so they'll wear those colours and, and things like that. But you can find more effective ways to go deeper. One of the things that lets me know that people are struggling with being iconic is when they copy somebody else. Now, this isn't about, this isn't going to be a rant about plagiarism, but here's why I feel uncomfortable with this. When we copy somebody else, we bury a little bit, we cover a little bit of who we are and what we do. And it means that the world doesn't get to see you. So you don't become iconic. Now, it's interesting because for years I worked with a mentor and I will always um, name this mentor um, as well as many other people that I've worked with, I'll always give them credit where credit's due. So if there is something that somebody has taught you, then name them. That's OK. Add your insights to it. Put your spin on it. But when you put your spin on somebody else's work and try to make it your own, it actually hides fractions of you and fragments of you. So people pick it up in your energy. They're like, mm, I like what that person shares, but I don't quite get it. I don't quite understand. So position your work, position your offers, but give credit where credit's due. Don't copy, don't plagiarise, don't try and pass off somebody else's work. This is the way that you become visible, but not iconically and often visible in the wrong type of way. One of the problems that people have is they don't know how to put together their best offers. And this is why I would wholeheartedly recommend, even if you've been in programs for years, people go, oh, that's it. I've spent enough. I'm not spending any more money on programs. Well, we are always learning, always evolving. And all you're doing is starving yourself from the very thing that you perhaps really need to do. And one of the things that comes up the most around offers is the pricing piece. And it's the reason why in Iconic, when we go through the offer component, I go through the six key things. And one of them is, well, how much is an offer? But it's not just about how much it is. It's not just about profitability. It's also helps you to discover and uncover 
who it's suitable for, how to position it in the market, how to arrange your pricing plans if you're having them, which currencies to sell in, who to sell it to, who not to sell it to, whether to take credit card or PayPal or bank transfers, the invoicing, all of those kinds of things. It's a much deeper conversation. And it's one that many people literally approach with an attitude of, yeah, that will do. And it really harms your um, iconic brand. Now, don't get me wrong. This is from somebody who has sold high ticket stuff and low ticket stuff as well. Um, but there is a very purposeful reason behind it. So this is something that I advocate for you too. Um, the other thing is, it reminds me of a word from the 90s we used to use when we were out clubbing and it was somebody was stush. Now, some of you might have come across this word. Some of you might not somebody was stush. And what we meant by that was that they would like, they'd be feeling themselves, they'd think, I'm, I'm too, I'm too great for my own good. And there would be this air of no photos, please don't look at me. And it's interesting that so many people strive on their way to do something. <coughs> people in the, over time have attempted to pick my brains on well, I really want to get into speaking or I really want to do better videos or I don't seem to be selling very well. What can I do? Yet there's two reasons to not allow that to happen. It chips away at the icon that you are because they very rarely go and do the thing that you ask them to anyway. And if they do, they never credit you. And I don't mean just about crediting you publicly. But sometimes it's good to know when you've poured into somebody, poured into a business, poured into a problem or situation that they're able to come back and say, actually, from what you shared, it helped A, B or C. Even, you know what, you shared it, but it didn't really help me. And um, there is no such thing as failure, only feedback. And where Stush comes into it is. And I experience this all the time, you know, if I speak at an event or if I'm sharing um, somebody's podcast or, I, you know, I've been a, a guest on someone's podcast. Um, oftentimes, people will be happy to say, I'm a speaker at such and such or I have been interviewed by so and so. But they do nothing to promote that person. They do nothing to encourage that person. And whilst I understand that it might be something that they prefer to do behind the scenes and check in on them. It doesn't give the person their dues or their props. So being stush in this day and age is no longer a reason. Even if you are neurodiverse or neurotypical, even if you are shy, even if you are humble, even if you are braggy boasty, even if you're shouty sweary, even if you're introvert, extrovert or ambivert. That's not something to do. We need to humanise the people around us and it doesn't always have to be you. OK, so that I'm going to stop there. Thank you so much for watching this. We've got one more masterclass left tomorrow and that masterclass will be around impact and, of course, visibility. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing these. Um, I hope you get great value of these. And if you're watching this live on Facebook, thank you so much. Do share the link with somebody. And you'll also be able to re-watch this right now on YouTube. Just go over to YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to me, search at Jenny Kovacs. Click subscribe and you'll be able to see all the other juicy stuff, including part one that I shared yesterday too. That's it. Thank you so much. And if you want to know more about Iconic, send me a message with Iconic. Um, and if you want to discuss more, let me know. If you'd like the link to book it at the 50% off rate, which is nuts, like this is not a sensible price for this program at all. It should be 10 times this amount. Um, but so if you want to jump in, even if you can't make all of the dates and you want to watch the replays, um, then you can do that too. And you've got access to that for as, as long as the, the platform is up. That's it. Bye for now.